guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 1. Today we're going to be breaking down and doing my review for Episode 3 of the season. Now, there were so many WTF moments throughout the episode, especially at the end, and there was like this one big fight scene with Superman and a mysterious alien. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any Superman Lois videos later this year. Okay, so... Yeah, a lot went down, we're gonna get to the ending, which I think everyone is kind of freaking out about and everyone wants to talk about, we'll get to that in a bit, however, let's start at the start of the episode, so we got them painting the new house, you know, painting the walls, and you have this paint fight, it's a really nice moment between the kids and the family, just as a whole, and so Clark, during the fight, gets distracted because he hears something and it turns out there is a disaster and Superman needs to save the day. And so the opening serves the purpose of introducing the idea of superheroing to the kids because it's a big kind of theme throughout this episode that they're kind of questioning their dad like has he been listening in like what has been happening and like what can he do what won't he do with his powers. So then we see Superman he goes over he flies over to China and he pulls up a bridge and saves these people. Obviously, the CGI was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't like the best CGI. However, it was like this big, ambitious scene. And so it was really good to see. And just overall, I really enjoyed this episode. Yes, it has a lot of drama in terms of it being very kind of CW. However, I don't think it is necessarily CW. And it felt better than that. So I wasn't too bothered by the drama in this episode. And... I thought it was overall like a really, really solid episode, and I've loved every episode so far. Okay, so Clark talks about his powers, and so they talk about how basically you don't want to be exposed, so don't go around using your powers, Jordan, essentially the same thing that they've been saying for the last couple of episodes, and so they just don't want Superman's identity to be revealed because it's going to impact them all. And so you have like this whole thing with Lana and Kyle this episode, I mean you don't really see Kyle that much. like one point Lois's car actually gets blown up and you see Kyle and they have like a kind of mini interaction. However, you can tell there is something wrong with the Cushings in this episode and it's obvious that there is a strain between all of them. And so it comes to fruition later in the episode with Sarah. Okay, so you hear Clark and he hears Jordan being harassed and he comes to the school and he shows up and they're like, wait, have you been spying on us? And so they all freak out about this, about them listening in, so I don't know how I felt about that, however, he was saving the day, like, he literally stopped Sarah's asshole boyfriend from, like, beating him up, so I would give their dad a pass, however, that's just what I would do. Anyway, so you have the Smallville Gazette, you got Lois, and they get a visitor from this person called Miss Powell, and she wants to give Morgan Edge hell, she wants to nail him, as she said. And so we'll get back to what happens with her and to do with Lois's investigation in just a bit. It also must be noted that Lex doesn't show up in this episode and it seems like they are setting up a new main villain because we've been talking about this for the past two episodes. We've been like, Lex isn't actually a bad guy, like he thinks he's doing the right thing However, he is taking extreme measures to do the right thing. So I'm wondering, is he going to turn into this kind of Alexander Luthor character who in the comics is a good Luthor and will he end up teaming up with Superman? I will be interested to see that because if he somehow realizes that this version of Superman isn't the one from his Earth that we saw last episode with the black suit, and if he realizes that the main villains of, say, this season, who were introduced and teased at the end of this episode, are Kryptonians who are probably going to try and destroy this Earth, he may side with Superman. And now, I think that is a good theory, and I would be interested to see if that actually turns out to be. Okay, so you get Sarah breaking up with Sean. He is pretty much just an asshole, and throughout this episode, you see him a couple of times, and basically, Jordan tells him what's what, and he tells all of the bullies in his high school, what's what, basically using his advanced strength, and so he has a plan to push back against the bullies, and so it's really cool seeing him going out on the American football field, and he stands up, and he's, you know, basically controlling his powers, he's able to harness them to use them for a way to advance, like, his, you know, mental well-being, he's generally feeling a lot happier, and so you have that 
one scene where you have Clark turning up and you have Sean facing off against Jordan and Jordan's eyes flash and you're like, oh my god, he's gonna kill him, he's gonna heat vision his face off or something. But no, he's able to control it because Clark shows up and Sean is scared away. So you have this whole idea in this episode that Superboy, well, you know, Jordan, who is going to probably become Superboy at some point, is able to control his powers more than what we thought. And so we go back to the Smallville Gazette and we see Lois and her editor with the woman who has just approached them and she shows them a audio recording of their son, the last message that she ever heard from him and so he's missing and you get this like photographer or like a private investigator following and watching Lois and all of her actions and this leads to her car actually blowing up and so this is a major scene where we're sure Morgan Edge is setting someone off on her. Like, someone is definitely following her, and so you get that tease, and obviously we get the big reveal towards the end of the episode, and we'll get to that in a minute, but a big conflict for Lois in the first half of the episode is her editor being like, we don't do this sort of news, like, what happens if she's faking it? But it turns out she is not faking it, and so the editor basically comes around, and you're going to be seeing more risky Lois Lane type stories that she would normally do at the Daily Planet and so yeah her car gets blown up it's set on fire they think it's Morgan Edge now I'm curious I think it's definitely Morgan Edge related but he is using other people however I don't think he's powerful enough to literally control all of these aliens but we'll have to wait and see and so we got Jordan and Jonathan they talk about his plays during football and basically him showing up and like wrecking everyone and so and so that was a great scene and then you have Lois and Clark they talk about Lois's story and how everyone has walls up around themselves in Smallville this is obviously emphasized with the Cushings in this episode because the Cushings are totally breaking down at the same point and so you have Jordan getting found out that he's been using his enhanced strength to be on the football field Clark first hears this from Lana as they meet after that big kind of row that Clark walks in on at the diner with Lana and Sarah. And so we cut to later in the day and you have this argument pursuing between Jordan and Clark and Lois is there and Jonathan is there in the background as well. And so they're talking about containing the powers like when I was younger I didn't use this to, you know, become better at sports or anything like that. Like. You need to keep your powers to yourself and not draw attention to yourself. However, this changes because by the end of the episode you get some great scenes with Clark and Clark finally accepts this is the right thing to do to let Jordan do what he wants to make him happy. And Lois tells Clark to find where Jordan's anger comes from and basically control it. And so Lois goes investigating and she arrives at the lady's house that came earlier in the episode and she finds the place absolutely destroyed, it's completely trashed. And so at that point, she sees a figure in the house. And so Lois is attacked and you're like, what is happening? Lois is getting smacked around by this big guy. This is definitely the kind of PI figure we saw earlier in the episode. However, he is not just like a private investigator. This guy is a full on alien and he has powers. And Lois literally stabs him in the head and you're like what the hell like this guy is not human he just got stabbed in the head and he just pulls out and he's like yeah sure whatever and so Lois calls Superman and Superman blasts through the wall and this was an amazing scene because it was completely unexpected I didn't expect this guy to have superpowers and to be able to nearly best Superman like this is a very intense fight and so you see the guy has superpowers he has super strength specifically and so Superman goes on a mad one because Lois is being beaten up by this criminal or by whoever he turns out to be. And so you have Sharon, that is the lady's name, who came to Lois earlier in the episode at the Smallville Gazette. And she's barely breathing because this guy has come to sort her out and he nearly does. And he's nearly successful, but he is halted by Lois and Superman. So that was one of my favorite scenes of the whole episode because it really incorporated Lois's investigating and also the Superman action, but also the big reveal that this guy is an alien. And you're like, who has sent this alien? Does Morgan Edge have some sort of power over him? Well, we'll get back to that in just a second. So you have Sarah and Lana. They have this kind of big dramatic moment after this. And she talks about how she felt trapped and 
they talk about the future and basically Lana comes clean to Sarah about her feelings and how she's been feeling recently and so it's a big emotional scene and I thought it was pretty good and so we go back and Clark wants to be a good dad he reveals that he's gonna let Jordan play football especially because Jordan has had like a great last couple of days and he's come to accept that this may be what Jordan wants and he should just let him do it and so Jordan talks about a feeling and he says yes you probably know what I mean and he's talking in terms of his powers and being able to control them and Clark trusts him to do it and it seems like he can control it at certain points when he wants to and even though he won't probably be able to like use his heat vision on command without getting really angry it seems like he can definitely control it in a way and so Clark becomes the assistant coach of the football team obviously to keep an eye on Jordan and Jonathan but I think it was a really nice touch to make him like involved with the school stuff because it's completely un-Superman you know he's an assistant he's not even getting paid for it and so this leads to a great moment with Jordan and Sarah there's obviously been a connection between them recently and I'm starting to really like these two characters together because they do have a lot of great moments and so Clark is really funny, he's in the background, he's dragging along this big container obviously he's not struggling but he's pretending that he's just like oh normal Clark from Smallville who's weak can't even carry a container without struggling so it was a great moment and he realizes there is some sort of connection between the two of them so it was nice seeing him point out that Jordan and Sarah definitely has something right there and so we move on and um, Lois is on something and you get to see the board at the Smallville Gazette and this is right at the end of the episode because there is some major stuff that we need to talk about right now. So we had the reveal that that guy who was following Lois and blew up her car was an alien. And now we don't know who he was working for, however it was suggested that he was probably working for Morgan Edge because Lois is basically putting out a journalistic hit on Morgan Edge and so maybe he's enlisted his super friends let's say and so Lois and the editor of the Smallville Gazette have basically formed some sort of board and they're gonna be investigating what is going on with these people and like why is there an alien working for supposedly Morgan Edge and so that was a great way to end the episode however it doesn't beat the ending the final scene of the episode you get the guy in the car and he's talking to who is supposedly Morgan Edge, although we never heard the voice, so we don't know that for sure. And we're like, holy crap, what is going on? Because a new Kryptonian turns up and she kills him. She turns on her heat vision and blasts the hell out of him. So this was the major WTF moment of the episode where I was like losing my mind. And I'm sure you guys were. And so who is this person? And is this like an evil version of Superwoman? Is this an alternate version of Supergirl? How is this Kryptonian here? Well, now let me explain this. So, the character that's revealed is actually a character from the comics called Lesla La, and I think that's how you pronounce it. And this character is in fact Supergirl's enemy in the comics. She is a Supergirl villain, and she is from Kandor, which obviously is the city that gets bottled by Brainiac in the comics. So what is going on here? Why is Lesla showing up? And how is she here? And what is her plan? So she is definitely working with someone because at the end of the episode she says, It's done. I'll call the team. So there is a team of supposed Kryptonians. Now, what could be going on? Does Kandor exist? Is the bottle city of Kandor a real thing? Was Brainiac actually there on Krypton? And did he take the city? And that's how she survived and somehow they've broken out of the city. However, she could be from another Earth and could be another displaced person from Crisis. So in an alternate universe, she is still from Krypton and she probably knows Supergirl and she probably knows of Superman. However, she has never met our versions of the character and she never arrived to Earth Prime or Earth One as it used to be known as. And that's why we never heard any reference to do with her. So that is my theory that Supergirl's enemy from the comics, Les Lala, is in fact from another Earth due to Crisis. This is a big thing because they done that with Lex. And so how are all of these Kryptonians alive? And I'm presuming it's a team of Kryptonians that we're gonna see. But yeah, that was a shocking ending to the episode. I had no idea anything like this would happen. And I'm so excited to see how they play out the storyline. And it was a great cliffhanger for the episode. But anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. And subscribe if you're new. And turn on notifications to not miss any videos. 
Also remember you can become a member of the channel and join me with my monthly Zoom calls and you get other cool benefits. By becoming a member of the channel, all you need to do is click the join button next to the subscribe button to become a member of the DC TV show. Also remember, live streaming on Thursday, we're going to break down all of this, probably with a few guests. Also remember, a few hours after this video goes up, we're going to be releasing my Flash Episode 3 trailer breakdown, so be on the lookout for that. Can't wait to talk about it. So for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.